Hi, this is Mike Casey, uh, Director of Education with Home Inspection University. And today we're at a house, about 10, 15 year old home in the Midwest, and we're going to be inspecting the electric panels starting at the service. Now this one, we've got an underground service, comes up through a service lateral right here. This is a plastic conduit that feeds this, what's called a meter base. Um, we've got a large enclosure here, and I'm seeing that we have two plastic conduits that exit this meter enclosure. So this is telling me that we most likely have a uh, parallel wired service, which means that we're gonna have most likely two panels in the basement that are service panels that are wired in what's called parallel off of this meter. So inside this enclosure, we're gonna have lugs going this way, and then when these uh, uh, service conductors come in, we've got separate connections for both service entrance cables. And you can see here we have these big uh, LB boxes that enter this meter hub. And this is the service lateral that goes underground out to the transformer that's in the street. So you can tell the difference, it's such a large one. When you have a big enclosure like this, that almost always means that you're gonna have uh, service entrance conductors in parallel going to two panel boards that are in the basement or in a garage or wherever they might be. Now this one, we've got some other components outside as well. And we can see this looks to be an added sub-panel that we're gonna open up in just a minute. And then this is telephone, cable TV, um, and so on, low voltage components that are connected here as well. So pretty typical for this location. And I'm seeing here, this looks to be our grounding electrode conductor. This is gonna go to a piece of metal that's driven into the dirt, typically a rod. And you'll notice that the telephone and cable TV and so on will bond to this as well. That would be typical. You want everything to be all bonded together so it has equal potential to ground. So this is the right way to do it. On more modern panels, you're typically gonna have a central point ground that's installed on the outside of this enclosure or the service equipment for everybody to connect to. So cable, uh, phone, and so on, you know, satellite, they all connect together at the same place. This is a close-up of the meter on this, this big, large uh, meter hub and enclosure we were talking about. And one of the things I like to look at, although it's not required by the standards of practice for a home inspector, is I like to look at the rating for the meter, just so I know, you know all the different aspects of the service when I'm determining the capacity. Now this meter here, you can see it has the number 200 CL. That tells me that this meter is rated at a maximum of 200 amps. Uh, there's also a meter made that's called a 320 CL that I would typically see on, say, a 400 amp service. The other rating on this is the 240 volt. That's a standard in America uh, voltage rating. Uh, all services are gonna be 240 volts and we maintain the uh, 120 volt circuit by connecting a neutral to it. So pretty typical meter. Again, we're looking at 200 amp uh, rating on that meter. So I know just by looking at this, that the maximum capacity of any service in this building is gonna be 200 amps because it's limited by the meter. Right, we're going to inspect this, what looks to be an added sub-panel on the outside of this house. Uh, we can see we just looked at before the service equipment. And this is a small sub-panel. And we can see that it, it's an outdoor rated type of a box. And one thing you can see here is on the back where I'm sticking my fingers, there should be about a quarter inch space between the enclosure and the wall surface that allows the water to drain through. And a good tip off that we're looking at an outdoor enclosure will be this awning style cover that opens this way. That's to protect the interior components from moisture. And we're just gonna pull off this dead front. I like to slap it with the back of my hand first and make sure that it's not energized. There's no unusual sounds coming from the panel. So we're gonna pull this off, pull out the screw and have a look inside. You want to just pull it off slowly. Try not to trip any breakers. This one, we've only got one. Now this panel, we can see that we have our sub-panel feeder penetrates the enclosure in the back of the box here. And the cable that's coming in, I can see that we don't have a cable connector or, or a stress clamp, some people call it. So that's a reportable item there. There should be a stress clamp around that cable connection or penetration to the box. And I can see that we have our two hots. We have 
a neutral right here and we also have an equipment rounding conductor that's over here. Now there's a 50 amp breaker in here, a 240 volt breaker. You can see it has the circuit tie for both the, the legs of the breaker. This happens to feed a hot tub that's out in the back of this house. And what we're seeing here is the two hot feeds. We also have a neutral and that tells me that there's probably a 120 volt component in that hot tub. Most likely a light or uh, could be the pump, could be some other components. Now the branch circuit that goes out to feed that goes into a liquid tight conduit. That would be typical for outside. And I see we have two hots again, the red and the black, a neutral, and the neutral is separated here from the equipment ground. And the equipment grounding conductor, what they did here was just connect it to the equipment ground in the cable that's feeding the sub panel. Technically this is incorrect. What we should have here is a bonded terminal bar that connects to the enclosure because we have to protect this metal box as well. We've got, this is protecting only the circuit that goes out to the hot tub. We have right now no protection for this enclosure should it become energized. So we should have a bonded terminal bar, which is basically just a bar with some slots in it and screws to hold them in place that connects to this this enclosure itself and both of these wires should connect to that bonded terminal bar so we're also protecting this enclosure. And another tip off when you're looking inside that you're looking at an outdoor type of a box will be you'll see that the back where the mounting screws go have built-in standoffs to help create that quarter inch gap between the can here itself and the exterior surface of the building. That's to keep any water from sitting behind the panel and causing uh, uh, deterioration to the enclosure. So right here we're missing that stress clamp and here we should have a bonded terminal bar similar to this one for the neutral but it should connect direct to the box and be separate from this neutral because we always want to keep the neutral current separate from the equipment ground and any equipment that's downstream from the main service panel. So I think we're done with this one. We'll go ahead and put the cover back on. You always want to be careful putting the cover on. Try not to let it hit any of the breakers. Because when they turn off, sometimes they don't turn back on again. And this circuit here, it should be labeled. There should be something, a little sticker on here that tells us what this breaker is for. Um, simply just writing hot tub would be fine, but all circuits are required to be labeled. And I think we're done here and we can go ahead on inside. I'll see you in there.